Welcome everyone, my name is Bob Delisandro and welcome to the Millville Army Airfield Museum. I'm standing in front of a 17 foot section, nose section, of a C-47 Skytrain. And what we're going to learn today is the history of the C-47 as it helped the Allies win World War II. The reason we're here is my father was a pilot during World War II and flew C-47s. And what you'll see on this chart is a picture of the 436 Troop Carrier Group, which had four squadrons, the 79th Squadron, the 80th, 81st, and 82nd. And the second plane right here, which has a squadron code, each squadron had its own unique code. And my father flew with the 80th, which was squadron code 7D. Now the group commander, pictured here, is Colonel Adriel Williams, and he actually flew an 80th Troop Carrier Squadron airplane during World War II. And we are going to restore this nose section in what's called the livery, or the squadron codes, of the 80th Troop Carrier Squadron, and painted with the nose art of the Daily Express, and you can see that clearly on here. It's a real magnificent piece of nose art. We are now in the nose section or the front of the plane and what you're looking at right now is the sound insulation that covers the inside of the nose and this was installed by our restoration team. What the camera is looking at right now is the navigators section. This is where the navigators sat at this table and right now you folks can use GPS to get just about anywhere you want to go. And if you happen to make a wrong turn, GPS will will reconnect you to the right way. Back in the 1940s, flying this C-47, all you had were maps and compasses and the stars. And that's how the navigator got the pilots to the right spot to drop their paratroopers or drop their cargo or to land. Opposite the navigator section we have the radio operator section you can see that his area is also covered the skin of the plane or the outside inside of the plane is covered with the sound insulation this is where the radio operator handled all the communication equipment and there's a radar antenna or an antenna right above where you're looking which is the primary antenna for the radio operator and all of his equipment would be up against that little wall which we call a bulkhead. What you're looking at right now is a pretty cool feature of this airplane. It's called the Astrodome and there's a piece of plywood covering that circular area right now. You can relate it to a moonroof in your car but there's a plexiglass dome that fits over top of that and the navigator would actually stick his head up in there and shoot the stars to get an accurate navigational reading. Now moving closer to the cockpit, on the right hand side you'll see that area that's covered with the webbing. That's where the crew would put their duffel bags and their personal belongings for the particular mission that they're on. What you're looking at right now is the cargo door section and obviously you can't see a door there. We covered the door up and there won't be a door when we finish. And the bulkhead that you're looking at right now is right behind the pilot and there will be a ladder attached to that that we have to build ourselves. Now what you see are the pilots and co-pilot section. Now the pilot would sit on the left which is called the port side and the co-pilot would sit on the right which is called the starboard side. Now you don't see any gauges or dials or anything like that. They had to be pulled out and they're being refurbished in our shop along with the actual seats for the pilot and co-pilot. And when that's done, we will install those and it's going to look almost as good as new. Let's talk about the actual pilots and co-pilots. Now my dad was one of the oldest pilots in the squadron. He was 28 years old. The average age was typically anywhere from 20 to 22 years old for the pilot and co-pilot. The navigator and radio operator could have been as young as 19 or 20. I'd like to talk a little bit about my father and his time in the service during World War II. My dad was actually drafted into the Army and went through training to become a medic. When it came time to look for new pilots, because the Army was 
There was no Air Force at the time. It was called the U.S. Army Air Corps. The Air Force wasn't really created until 1947, two years after the end of World War II. So my dad decided that he didn't want to be a medic, so he volunteered to become a pilot, and this is his diploma that was given to him in May, on May 23rd, 1944, out of Stockton, California. And that's when he became a pilot. He was commissioned as a second lieutenant, which is an officer in the United States Army. This is his official photograph right here. And the wings on his uniform that you can see down here, these are his actual wings from that picture and the wings that he wore on his uniform. These are 76 years old. Now my dad flew 21 combat missions during World War II. His first mission was on September 17, 1944, and that was for the invasion and liberation of Holland, and that was called Operation Market Garden. Now you may have heard of a unit called the 101st Airborne Division, the Screaming Eagles. If you get a chance to see the movie, The Band of Brothers, they were all in the 101st Airborne Division. My dad flew that C-47 with members of the 101st Airborne Division into Holland on September 17th. And for that mission, he received an air medal. And this is the air medal that he received right here. He actually got three of them for the three major operations that he flew. Operation Market Garden, and then the Battle of the Bulge, which you may have heard about and read about, possibly in history class or seen a movie. They, did, they didn't do any paratroop drops to speak of during the Battle of the Bulge, but when the weather cleared, the weather was horrible during that time, it was over the Christmas period of 1944, the, when the weather cleared up, the C-47s got in the air and they dropped ammunition, food, and medical supplies to the troops that were on the ground fighting the Germans. After that, the final huge, the final large airborne operation in World War II was called Operation Varsity, and that was in March of 1945. And my dad participated in that, and that's when he got his third air medal. And he actually towed a glider. There were paratroop drops right out of the plane, and then there were glider uh, tows, which carried equipment, troops, and, and, and weapons. And then when they got over the drop zone, the glider would be released from the back of the C-47, and the pilot would literally glide into a landing. Very dangerous, very brave soldiers, all anywhere from 17, 18 years old to 20, 21, 22 years old. They are now called the greatest generation. We have a lot to be thankful for that they did what they had to do, brave, and helped us win the